This is some new intro music, you feel me? My name is Yellow Dusted, this is YDZ TVs. I'll name this review later, I guess, I don't know. But this is gonna be my review of the uh, Mandalorian Episode 5, you dig what I'm saying? And so far the season's been great. But before I get into how much I love the Mandalorian, I first wanna introduce myself. My name is Yellow Does It. you feel me? That's AKA Yellow No W, AKA Yes My Name's A Color, AKA The Grump God. And it looks like today, I'm gonna have to be The Grump God. Cause as much as I love the Mandalorian, I was always just a tiny bit disappointed with it. You feel what I'm saying? I really felt like the Mandalorian was the perfect opportunity to start telling some a little bit more grown up Star Wars stories. I don't need a whole lot of sex and violence and, and gore and that's not what I mean when I say grown up, but you know what I'm saying, man. Instead of the shallow kind of good versus evil, is this a good decision, is this a bad decision? And then the shallow storytelling that is often associated with like children's television or children's movies or children's cartoons. I wanted a little bit more of a deep dive into this character here, the Mandalorian, into his emotional stakes and the, the weight of his decisions. But uh, instead what I got was a live action cartoon which is great man it's fun I enjoy it I love it baby Yoda is the greatest thing ever until episode 5 so we're just gonna look at a couple of clips you feel me from the episode and, and then I'm gonna talk about why it's all trash and I'm not just gonna, I'm not trying to like build my channel up on hating stuff, you feel me? It's so I can then turn around and love everything once I get a few, you know, a few viewers, you know, people who enjoy my content. Once I get a few fans, I'm gonna switch and start loving everything. No, I love what I love and I hate what I hate. And I love The Mandalorian, but I do not like this episode. But let's just take a look at it a little bit, man. You feel what I'm saying? You got some good Star Wars content here, you feel what I'm saying? And the, the way the episode starts off is great, man. You know what I mean? Or it's good, anyway. I've never been big on the uh, the Star Wars, like, spacecraft fight scenes. You know what I'm saying? I've never really been my bag. I might let you live. But this is great. This is quality content right here. I'm in no way mad about any of this that's happening. This is all incredible. And I don't want you to misunderstand me and just like, uh, it's one, you know, subpar episode. All the other episodes are incredible. So this is the one, you know, kind of average episode that, oh, he's just gonna use this opportunity to bash the Mandalorian because everybody loves it. Don't misunderstand me. I still love the Mandalorian. I'm still a great fan of this uh, television show. I love the Western motif that kind of paints over everything, even sometimes to a fault, I'll say. They, they follow the Western tropes a little too strongly, but you kind of have to do that for the cats who have never really watched a Western before, right? These young cats, they come up, they don't even really like Star Wars. They just know that it's popular right now. You feel what I'm saying? So what, I understand what the creators are doing when they do this. However, it's important to remember that there are some of your more uh, mature fans, right, who are looking for more mature content. And I'd really just think that Mandalorian was the perfect opportunity to kind of just tell some grown-ups just for Star Wars as a whole to grow up a little bit it can go right back to being for kids on every other series but I feel like the premise of the Mandalorian right a kind of a lone wolf bounty hunter badass he's supposed to be a badass although this guy does kind of just get his ass kicked for every episode right he's nice he's good at what he does but I think maybe they need to show me him being a badass just a couple more times you know what I mean so, so when I come to this episode, right, and the ship is injured or whatever, he's got to fly into port and he's got to go to the mechanic and get the ship fixed. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm not upset about that at all. <laughs> that, shit, you see that? that shit's smoking though, huh? He's not going to make it. <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> I just think that's, that's funny to me, man. Oh, man. Oh, hold on. And these little, these little droids that they have in here too, that, that old girl has in here, hopping out of the woodwork here. Look at this stuff. I mean, look at these guys. This is great. This is incredible quality Star Wars stuff, right? Hey! But the moment right here in the tavern, they say it out loud. And first of all, looking at the goddamn cantina. Okay. Hey, droid. I'm oh my god, this looks familiar. What? Do, do I know this place from? Unfortunately, the bounty guild no longer operates in Tatooine. And that's when I knew, and the moment that that fucking droid said Tatooine, I knew that this was going to be fan service, nostalgia bomb, you feel what I'm saying? Just give me, oh, let me cue up this artery, give me this needle, man, fill it up with this hot, with this hot nostalgia, and inject that bitch into my veins, and plunge. 
Unleash the Plunger. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's like, it's all, this entire episode is just nostalgia. It's just, like, somebody said to me, um, Nerd React, Nerd React, um, Nerd Reactor, Nerd Reactor, I, I believe it's his, um, link in bio. <laughs> <laughs> link in the description <laughs> link in bio is such a nasty social media influencer it's just a nasty it's just like oh shut just shut you fucking douche shut up but link in description <laughs> and if you want to see me live stream these reactions link in bio but uh regardless though man the nerd reactor he told me as a non-spoilery kind of way that oh this episode is kind of meh uh, it pays a lot of homage, is what he says. You feel what I'm saying? It pays a lot of homage. And <laughs> when I watch this episode, I'm like, bro, this isn't homage. This is far from homage. This is not homage. They're not paying respects to the old. They're doing the same thing that everybody who is critical of The Force Awakens says that The Force, Awak the Force Awakens did. Heating up this warm nostalgia and spoon feeding it to you. Earlier in the episode, the trick says the fucking, um, uh, Looks like some carbonite, some some carbonite damage or whatever that shit was that that was set in. It was just just a lot of we got we're right here in the cantina or whatever it is. We got the young punk brat bounty hunter whose son gets the job from right right this guy. It's a job to this. Get into the guild. All right. Hey, sh ah, sure, sure. Watch. How do y'all? How do you not know that this guy's gonna go bad? How do you not know that this little ambitious punk brat bounty hunter isn't gonna turn on Mando? How do you not see that? What do you think this is? You think just because the last episode Mando made a friend, you think everywhere he goes, and not gonna like this is this is classic kind of like old school storytelling, man. Hey, we're gonna trick you all into thinking that the universe is good by having Mando run into somebody who is an equal of his. That's a friend. So obviously, when we run into somebody who's not an equal of his, who may have to uh, look up to him or aspire to be like him, they have to be a friend. Mando is in no way threatened by this gentleman. Well, little does he know. <laughs> but that's not, that's not even, that's me nitpicking. That's the grump god's true essence right there that's coming out. I mean, that's not a big deal. That doesn't make me not like the show. Then we go, we run out, they, they, they hop on some speeders or whatever, and uh, they fly out to, oh, not to mention... Not to mention, Mando is so loose with it, knowing goddamn well that, that he's on fuck, he's on the fucking run. He sits here and he lets the young guy see Baby Yoda. He lets the young punk brat bounty hunter see Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda is the most wanted. Mando and Baby Yoda are the most wanted uh, individuals in this subsect of the fucking universe, and Mando allows for this set. Okay, all right. So they're on speeders or whatever, and guess who they run into? These fucking guys. <laughs> these, these, it's like every single moment of this episode is just all pure nostalgia, right? Oh, guess, oh, guess what? Hey, look at this guy. <laughs> You've ever seen one of these creatures before? You see what, like, it's all, look at this fucking sand dunes. We're doing this again. I do think that, uh, boom. I think that this is an absolutely beautiful um, costume and helmet and sniper but like this is a lovely gorgeous shot this really touches me i really really all bullshit aside you know grump god aside i absolutely love this shot right here i think it's incredible oh look at that it's beautiful that best guard that best guard held up right but this is the problem though man so the whole fucking episode they're doing they're, it's all it's all fucking all right the two sons right we know tatooine has two sons all right maybe some of you don't right maybe maybe there's some new people who have never watched this uh who have never watched Ta who have never watched star wars and they don't know that tatooine has two sons but this is literally the way that it's written oh, it's been a while. good let me let ming not because i like ming not she does a good job oh look the suns are coming up Come on, Fit. Like, what do we. Uh, we know we're on Tatooine. The episode ends, I think, pretty cool. Mando is shown to be clever again, and I appreciate whenever uh, they show me that our main hero is clever, right? I appreciate that kind of stuff. Hey, hands up, or whatever, cuff him. right? Go cuff him. Obviously, Mando put his hands up. You're a guild traitor, Mando. Boom. Got his little flare thing on him.
got the gun to Baby Yoda's head this eve as is, is, is if we needed any more reason to hate this punk brat bounty hunter. This evil son of a bitch put the gun to Baby the blaster to Baby Yoda's head. Come on, man. Come on. Couldn't we be just a little bit? But you know what it is? But it's for kids. It's for children. An adult doesn't need to see the blaster put up against Baby Yoda's head to, to get the, the message that Baby Yoda is in grave danger. But because it's for kids. Here is the target you helped escape. Baby Yoda's worth money to him. There's no reason right. for him to put the damn blaster to Baby Yoda's you head. Won't just make me a member of the guild? Let me ask you a question. Do you think Baby Yoda is playing Jedi mind tricks on Mando? We already know that he's force sensitive. We already know that he has this, you know, innate ability to utilize the force in ways that are disproportionate, right, to his age and, and size and ability. So do we imagine that maybe Mando is being influenced by Baby Yoda through force of uh, brain control, Jedi mind trick, whatever the shit is called. I don't know. I'm not that big of a fucking story. Writer. You you nerds know what the fuck it's called. Just type in the comments what it's called <laughs> and tell me how fucking stupid I am and how stupid my channel looks. <laughs> just I don't know, man. I just didn't like this episode. But, um, but you know, Mando does the little surprise magical stuff. Maybe we could play a little... Uh... What will make me legendary? <laughs> Ambition. Pew, 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 pew. Ah, I cannot see. I'm going to shoot at nothing. Wow, Baby Yoda is crushed in the aftermath of having the punk brat bounty hunter fall on him. And that is the end of Baby Yoda squished. Now, best part of this episode? The promise of Ming-Na Wen's return. That is the best part of this episode. Single, solitary, best moment of that episode. Directed by Dave Filoni. Look at that. I don't know. Let me let me get back. Let me get back to one. The directing of the episode. I don't know. I'm not. Nothing particularly jumped out at me. Uh, like I said, the close up on Ming Na when she's wearing the helmet and has the sniper rifle. I think that's an incredible close up shot. Uh, the speeder shot was great. The acting, I guess, is cool. I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> if I keep seeing a fucking close up one shot of Mandalorian's helmet, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. I love this show. I think it's great. I even find it hilarious. At this point, I'm laughing at the close-up one-shots of a completely emotionless and blank helmet, right? <laughs> just throwing whatever emotions I think should be there, just projecting them onto Mando's face, which doesn't exist. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... <laughs> So, I just think that that's a really funny thing that they keep, they consistently do it. Like as if we have any idea what's going on underneath that hood, uh, underneath that helmet. But as far as the direction goes, I think, I think the direction was fine. I think this, the problems with this episode is the script, the script of the episode. The dialogue is kind of boring. You know, they have that great lady. I don't know who she is. I've seen her in things. I probably should have researched it, but I don't care enough to do that. That's terrible, right? Why are you watching my video if I don't care about what I'm talking about? Anyway, I think she's great. I think they gave her trash to say the upstart punk brat bounty hunter just kind of annoyed me but um he was supposed to right so he played his role great the plotting is fine i guess the more the episodes go on the more this series goes on each episode kind of just becomes a uh a kind of like things just are happening you know what i mean like there doesn't seem to be any kind of direction the story seems to be stumbling towards some kind of end goal uh, not actively going or pursuing it. Like, what is Mando actually trying to accomplish? He, the only thing he really ever wanted was the Beskar armor. He got the Beskar armor. The beginning of the third episode, I believe, he gets the Beskar armor. So he's done, right? He's pretty much accomplished everything that he could. And then he just ends up in these situations where, you know, he kind of has to protect this kid because I'm convinced the Jedi mind trick. The more I say that now, I'm convinced that the baby Yoda has Jedi mind trick Mando into being his servant. But yeah, so I mean, that's, uh, my issues with the episode is really mainly the nostalgia feeding, the whole pure, unadulterated, raw, should get me directly into my veins of nostalgia. And I'm sure there's a lot of Star Wars fans out there who are going to absolutely love this episode, and that's fine. It's subjective, right? Film, TV, entertainment, art is subjective. You can enjoy whatever you want to enjoy, just like I cannot enjoy whatever I want to not enjoy, man. With that said, 
I'm done with this shit. <laughs> my name is Yellow Does It, aka Yellow No W, aka Yellow Yes My Name's a Color, aka the Grump God. And the Grump God is who I had to be today, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully next week's episode of Mandalorian will be great. And with that said, the only thing I ever want you to leave here with, the only thing I ever want you to have at the end of my videos is peace.